In the early 20th century, Australia stood on the brink of an agricultural crisis. Queensland's sugarcane industry, a cornerstone of the nation's economy, was under severe threat and faced a crisis that threatened to bring it to its knees. The culprit? The cane beetle, a small but devastating pest whose larvae feasted on the roots of sugarcane plants, stunting their growth and destroying entire crops. Farmers watched in despair as their fields withered, their livelihoods hanging in the balance. Desperate for a solution, authorities sought a way to combat this agricultural scourge without resorting to harmful pesticides that could further damage the environment. Enter the cane toad, a seemingly perfect solution. Native to Central and South America, these hardy amphibians were celebrated for their insatiable appetite for insects, including pests like the cane beetle. In 1935, with optimism and little forethought, Australia released over 100 cane toads into the sugarcane fields of Queensland. The hope was that these toads would act as natural pest controllers, saving the crops and restoring balance. But what unfolded was not a story of salvation. It was an ecological disaster of unprecedented scale. The toads, free from the natural predators that kept their numbers in check in their native habitats, multiplied at an astonishing rate. What began as a small, controlled experiment quickly spiralled into an uncontrollable invasion. The cane toads, far from being the saviours of the sugarcane fields, became agents of destruction. Their appetites were not limited to cane beetles. They devoured everything in their path – native insects, small vertebrates, and even other amphibians. The delicate balance of Australia's ecosystems began to crumble. But the true horror lay in the toad's secret weapon, a potent toxin secreted through their skin. Native predators, quolls, goannas, snakes and even crocodiles fell victim to this deadly defence. Drawn by the promise of an easy meal, these animals instead met a gruesome end, their populations decimated by the very creatures meant to protect the land. The ripple effects were catastrophic. With their natural predators gone, prey species exploded in number, leading to overgrazing and the collapse of plant communities. The once thriving ecosystems of northern Australia were thrown into chaos. The cane toads, relentless in their advance, spread like a plague across the continent. Their numbers swelled into the millions, and their range expanded far beyond the sugarcane fields of Queensland. They outcompeted native amphibians for food and breeding grounds, driving many to the brink of extinction. The landscape, once teeming with diverse life, became a monoculture of toads, a grim testament to humanity's hubris. As the scale of the disaster became undeniable, Australia launched a series of desperate efforts to curb the toad invasion. In the early stages, communities took matters into their own hands through toad busting, a popular activity where volunteers collected and euthanized thousands of toads in an attempt to slow their spread. While these efforts raised awareness and brought people together, they were ultimately a drop in the ocean against the toad's explosive reproduction rates. Scientists, meanwhile, turned to the toad's own biology for solutions. One promising avenue involved targeting their tadpoles. Researchers discovered that cane toad tadpoles are attracted to the toxins produced by adult toads, which they use as a chemical cue. By luring tadpoles into traps using these toxins, scientists hoped to reduce the number of toads reaching adulthood. This approach showed some success, but was difficult to implement on a large scale. Physical barriers were also erected in some regions to prevent toads from spreading into sensitive areas, such as wildlife refuges or islands. Habitat management strategies aim to create environments less favorable to toads, such as reducing standing water where they breed. These measures provided localized relief, but were insufficient to halt the toad's overall advance. In a fascinating twist, researchers experimented with training native predators to avoid eating cane toads. By exposing animals like quolls and goannas to small, non-lethal toads, scientists hoped to teach them that the toads were toxic. Some success was reported, with certain predators learning to avoid the toads but scaling this approach across vast areas proved challenging. Today, the cane toad invasion stands as one of the most devastating ecological disasters in history. It is a stark reminder of the fragility of ecosystems and the unintended consequences of human intervention.
Efforts to control the toad's spread continue, but the damage is done. If this harrowing saga of ecological missteps and unforeseen devastation has gripped you, prepare for more riveting tales from the natural world. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more thrilling wildlife stories. Stay tuned, the wild has more lessons to teach.